Hello everybody, this is Chris on GC Railfan and today we are going to review something that's actually decent. Uh, we are going to review the SSS or Steam Sound Supreme Class 8F pack uh, on the routes that AFs were very much affiliated with throughout their lives to an extent, uh, the Woodhead routes, especially in BR years. So, uh, I'll take you around for a quick tour of them. Now, uh, our drivable engine is sat here and we shall use this for the mainstay of our comments just right this second. Now the noticeable difference straight away is the SSS have included different versions of weathering uh, with their engines which is quite nice. Uh, so the one to the front left of us which is one that we'll be driving today uh, is a very heavily weathered machine. Uh, the one in the middle is an LMS livid machine uh, and looks very nice in a pristine condition. There is also different grades of weathering. So if I quickly get this abomination of a keyboard and just swizzle round. It is. Um, I just made it. Um, there's another heavily weathered version of the AF sat here in front and I've parked it next to the LMS one for contrast uh bleh, to contrast sorry between the pristine and weathered looking versions now predominantly the PR ones are the most weathered uh I'm driving weathered version 03 the one in front of us right the second is uh, 04 uh 04 is the most heavily rusted one going and it still looks very nice uh this is more of an end of steam era type engine um, but 1 and 2 respectively are lighter dustings of weathering uh, so yeah we'll just get onto the main engine right now um, so we'll start by looking at the model um, oops a daisy didn't mean to do that um, as long as it don't start moving I haven't got a problem that's fine um, let me just turn the blower off because I don't think it needs it there we go that's better, we've got a bit of peace and quiet. Um, I know, you turn off the boat, it's all <laughs> um, Anyway, we'll look at the model. The LMS one's quite near for detail. Uh, as usual with Steam Sound Supreme, they do not disappoint. Uh, the model they used is basically, well, this is an enhanced version of RSC's 8F. So the model is quite the same, but the textures have been somewhat updated. Uh, so of the physics and most predominantly the sounds as well uh, as well as a steam chest being enabled so uh, on the ATF it's the same as the standard RSC model so all the details are pretty much the same but as you can tell the transfers are very much quite crisp uh, if I just zoom in a bit they look a lot crisper from a distance even when you Zoom in a little bit, that's where it starts getting a little bit blurred, which isn't too bad, but everything seems a bit smoother texture wise, it looks a lot better. Uh, so that's the main difference between it. Now, the other difference is between the different sounds. So, of course, uh, if I get into a position without an OHLE mask getting in the damn way, uh, what we can do is I can get it in position and show that we also have different whistles now. So we've got a long blast which you can play around with on spacebar. And we've also got a short blast on the B button. So you can hold B down and you get a boop boop. I like that quite a lot. Uh, no, so, uh, well, currently I'm filming the SSS 8F Enhancement Pack, uh, well, collection uh, review right now, uh, <laughs> and I was just explaining whistle sounds. Um, Apparently, you get a boop boop. You get a boop yeah, boop, right, okay. boop. Yeah, I thought that was a kind of a bad time to come in. Hearing Bruce say that. Yeah, it was, but you're all right. Don't worry. Um, but. Uh, something to remember with these now with these um, enhanced whistling sounds is that uh, you can accurately represent certain whistling codes. Yes, such a thing did exist. Um, 
there used to be a booklet of whistling codes. I've got an example uh, here at home, somewhere in my pit of doom. Um, but uh, <laughs> I can't find anything at all. Um, but anyway, um, there used to be whistle codes. So, uh, for example, at certain signal boxes, as an example, say, you would be required to blow one long and two short, or one crow and too short or something like that to say you wanted water at the next water tower so if we did one long one and two short ones that would be I'm requesting water to take on water at Nottingham and that was a local signal box code for Luff Central uh, but anyway um, so yeah let's get on to the focusing side of things now lamps this is going to be my downfall of the review because I can never remember how to bloody engage them. Oh! Okay, well that was simple. I think you can change the light arrangements, but I don't know if it's in scenario. You tried control 1 to 8? Yeah, the control 1 to 8 will be better than, con than control, uh, sorry, than shift 1 and 2. You can try. No, it's not having any of it. So I believe you can change the lamps, but I think it's in Scenario Editor. I uh, could be wrong on that, I'll you update you. Can't. Oh, you can't. It's actually a fixed light arrangement, is it? Yes, it's to do with the model itself. Ah, right. Well, like, because I... RSC made it. Well, we can't really blame uh, SSS for that, but we can blame RSC. RSC, you fail. Um... Oh, sorry, they're called the dumb fail now. Black 5 only has the branch line head code and the 7F has the same as the 8F. Yes, I know. Um, but anyway, we'll get uh, on to driving this beast. Now, in the cab, we've got a lot more controls now. Well, I think a lot more of the no. controls have been refined, really, should I say. Yeah. Um, we've even got a weathering texture inside the cab as well, so it's got a nice rusty roof and stuff like that. So it's a bog standard cab, as usual. Uh, but uh, we'll get on to driving this. Uh, prior to this scenario starting, I did actually, I'll turn on the injectors while I'm sat here, um, I did actually, uh, whoops Daisy, wrong button, uh, I did actually um, turn the engine around on the turntable, which was somewhat unsuccessful, but successful because the turntable wasn't there originally. I had to <laughs> use it to get it to work. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't best pleased. God, this thing drinks a lot of water whilst on idle. Just uh, going to trickle lots of water in. We'll put some coal in as well. And uh, then we'll get it going. Don't prime it, Bruce. Oh, no, it won't get primed. I'll leave it about 90% water. I know uh, people advise against driving them like that in the simulator, but uh, for ease of review and farting about, it's quite handy. Not, not like what I did with the 4 MT. Oh, good God. Yeah, I primed it badly. Right, there we go. So, we're all getting ready to go. Uh, so, uh, we'll do that. This thing does have proper working injectors now as well, uh, which are operational with the J button. Uh, you get various settings, I believe, on that. I'm not an expert on ejectors, because me and ejectors don't always mix very well. Um... But nevertheless, oh, uh, well, is, is this going to work? Ah, right, there you go. Here's a double slip. Well, that explains a bloody lot. Um, but yes, right, there we go. Uh, is there a crossover there I can use? Yep, that would be fine. We'll worry about that in a bit, but anyway, let's uh, reverse and get our wagons. Well, go forward and get our wagons, shall we say. On the ejector, uh, it goes from 0 to 25 inches of pressure. Um, and as you probably know, if you don't have an understanding of steam engines, then I'll quickly explain that uh, as you probably know, uh, the higher the pressure in the vacuum, sorry, 21 inches, the higher the pressure in the. Uh, bleh, the the higher value of inches on the HUD indicates uh, that the brakes are off, basically. So if your inches are at zero 
inches then it normally means that your brakes are full on uh, you need to turn on the ejector to get it get the brakes off effectively uh, it's hard to describe it because I'm used to describing air brake systems and vacuum systems are the complete bloody opposite uh, <laughs> so everything basically, basically imagine it as a hoover yes the basically vacuum, vacuum sucks it and the vacuum cylinder on the underneath of a coach or a tender has a little piston in it when the vacuum is in the cylinder it sucks the piston off which pulls the brakes off but when you actually allow <laughs> the air into the system that pushes the cylinder down out of sorry, pushes the piston down out of the cylinder which pushes the brakes on against the wheels I have to say this thing's quite nippy and then again, unless you like the Great Western, it's actually £25 per square inch of vacuum and not 21 Yes, that was my mistake. Although I do think the Standard 4, interestingly, went up to 25 I'm not sure about that one. I think they did. It was a Robert Riddle's design, so... It might have done. There we go, we've just got to go out of this passing loop and then reverse all the way back onto the wagons, which I wish I moved forward now because the passing loop is so bloody long. Now the brakes are very, very effective on this ATF model. Uh, the uh, physics have been enhanced on that front especially, so you could have your brakes on 3% and it will Break a fair bit on your speed. Uh, the harder, you know, it's it's probably prototypical of how vacuum brakes properly work. Um, I've only driven one real railway engine, which was class 14, and when I used the vacuum brakes on that, um, I didn't need a lot. Basically, um, little was more, shall we say, uh, which is always a good point to make. You, oh, the cylinder yeah. cocks do work on this, by the way, guys. It's always good to point that out. Usually what i found is on a standard £21 per square inch vacuum system, the brakes come on at around 15 to 12 on the gauge. Yes, that's probably the best way of describing it. Please so do not argue with Foxfield man over here. You don't, you don't usually need to whack the... the, the, the um, the vacuum handle on completely you only need to sort of flick it down to 15 and then once you're down to 15 you can at least then control the brakes properly exactly yeah there you go he, he couldn't have explained it better uh, if I tried to be honest he did a good job of that so thank you Kieran for that that's quite useful okay um, this thing also can wheel slip very very easily uh, you have to be quite cautious with it the smoke effects which I'll get onto are fantastic. I th was it Chris Barnes who did the smoke effects? Oh, I can't remember. Some 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 guy who was and that that was very close. I nearly derailed. Um cuz I wasn't concentrating. Uh I have to admit though the smoke effects are brilliant. Uh they are fantastic. So we've got our rake of standard 21 ton hoppers uh which come with the woodhead route as standard. Um Nope, wrong helicopter view. Uh, so we just got like different we weathered varieties of them, sort of, sort of typical rake that an ATF would have had to have coped with uh, back in the day, as they say. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you the smoke effects when we're on the move. Uh, but now it's time to show you how wonderful this magnificent machine really does pull. So we've got about 20. Yeah, we've got. We'll turn on the uh, cylinder cocks. No, you don't necessarily have to open it open the second valve. The well, the thing, but with the, the SSS thing, pack, it sounds great on second valve. It sounds great, but, well, actually, I'm now applying real physics to a game which, quite frankly, anybody knows the physics in this game are absolutely crap compared to real life. But as anybody who is a fanatic of steam engines knows the advantages that engines like 8S and 7S have Look at the smoke the small, on that Is the small wheels and the small Look wheels. at the smoke people 
Look at the smoke. Very, very nice. Done properly as well. This thing barks really nicely. Yeah, you are right, Kira, in that. You are right, Kira, in that. Yeah, using the second valve all the time isn't particularly good for it. Yeah, small wheels allows an engine to have better traction, which is why tank engines, usually your fines will pull a lot more than big engines. Well, yeah, because you need to use the second valve a lot more with big engines than with big wheels. Yep. Big, big engine, big, big, big wheels on an engine were put on an engine for speed, not for power, not for its whole oh. capacity, for speed. Oh. Small wheels were put on an engine so that it could put its power onto the rails and pull as much as it could possibly pull. Wow, well that's bloody annoying. No, the, the 9Fs, the 9Fs weren't. The 9Fs were built for speed. They were speed brake engines. Yes, they could pull quite a bit. There we go. But they were they were weak. There we go. But they could pull 2,000 tons though. Yes, but when you look at that compared to an S160. Anyway. Anyway, back on topic. Um, I'm showing you. A oh, for goodness sake! Shut up. Um, <laughs> we know. We know. We know. Um. But uh, the smoke effects are quite nice. Uh, I think they sometimes do puzzle the eye in terms of how they work. Uh, they look accurate, but when you look at them from certain angles, it does make your eyes go a bit boss eyed. Um, but it looks magnificent, and the sound is brilliant. Um, I've got it at 21% reverse or an 83% throttle at the minute. So we're getting some speed up. I'm going to have to wrong road it because they'll forgot completely about how the point system works at WAF. Um, but uh, I, I will admit this looks beautiful. It sounds wonderful as well, and it drives very, very nicely. But I love the fact you can have a nice long whistle on it. It's brilliant. As my frame rate dropped a lot, then sorry about that. Oh, ha! There we go. We've got some short blasts on the whistle. Not going very fast, admittedly. We're only doing 20 mile an hour in a 30 at the minute. Uh, I could use a bit more pressure up if I wanted to, but I like cruising in this thing. It's quite a nice little thing to cruise in. Um, the interesting thing is now we're pulling a train. Uh, I think it's about 20 odd wagons or more. Um, I mean they're all loaded. Um, now we're pulling a proper train. Um, I think it's going to demonstrate uh, a lot more about how efficient this engine now works in terms of realism. Uh, how it's How it has been improved how the brakes now work properly and how you now have to really drive it like a real steam engine uh, to an extent. This isn't an advanced model but it is pretty damn good. It is very pleasant to drive. Yeah and I've also gone onto the wrong track. Uh, oh no I haven't. No I haven't. Um, that nearly got me in the doo doo. I won't crash into a set of buffers. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Um, I think. Congratulations, we are on the right track. Way. Now, which way should I go? Should I go that way or should I go that way? Oh, can't go that way. I'll have to go that way then. Okay. There we go. We're getting a nice lickety spit up here. A nice lickety spit is what we say around these parts. I'm just doing a test run with the with the compound with the three suburbans ahead of the the Garver. And actually it's amazing how easy it is to drive. 
Yeah, stick it in compound mode. Don't see how long I went through the years. You only need it in compound mode until you get to the speed of about 30. Then you put it in simple mode. Um, do the cutback on the reverser. Keep the regulator at about 200%. The thing will happily build up speed very quickly and still maintain a high boil pressure. Ah, I'll remember that. Unless you're me and you just go power. Which doesn't always work, admittedly. I've, I've been driving it where you go into full compound mode, wide open, shut it to about halfway, so it goes into full compound mode. You can set up on the station within a click of a finger faster than the buggy DMU, I dare say. Then when you get to about 25, 30, cut it back into simple, open it up again, cut back on the reverser, and it will just happily go. Happily cruising at about 25 miles out with a minute, just letting the pressure build back up a little bit. That's better. We're coming up to our first major hill, so this will be interesting to see how it sounds when it slugs it out, and to see how crap a driver I really am. I am on the woodhead. Yeah, I'm not that brilliant with steam edges, but I'm getting there. And if you are very lucky enough driving the compound, you can have the thing steaming against the uh, steaming it against the injector. That'll be quite interesting. Well, this is the thing. I'm using the compound tomorrow for an express run. Right, so now that I've finally um, I've got taken back half to an back. hour to get the carry to shut up while I'm talking. Um, now that I've finally taken half an hour to figure out how the class 90 works, I am finally moving. <laughs> Good. We're yeah. also recording a video right now. Hello. Yes. Hello, Jordy. Okay, fair enough. As you do. As you do. There we go. It sounds quite nice, this just over 25 miles an hour. It goes clack, 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 clack. It goes, it clacky, it. I can't even say clackety clack. Um. Clackety clack. Clackety clack, clackety clack. No, wait, that's blankety blank, blankety blank, oh, wasn't it? Blankety blank, yeah. Blankety blank, blankety blank. Blankety blank. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> retro. Retroisms. Um, but yeah, I'm now slowing uphill. Let's give it a bit more welly. Give it some. I don't think we were ever on topic, really. No, I don't think we ever were either. Uh, it, it's. It's always misgiven, that is. Always mis. Oh, hello. My works. It's, it's done its thing again. I am actually looking forward Hello, people. Sorry about that. I had a technical issue with Bandicam for some reason. Bloody stupid thing. Um. Oh, God. No. I, it, seriously, I just looked up to see what time I was on and it just went. <laughs> and so Bandicam became human. <laughs> oh, it feels like it regurgitates on me sometimes. It really does. <laughs> oh dear, Oliver, that that was very, very bad. <laughs> uh, this this model is not forgiving uh, in terms of how you drive it. Um, it's not bad because it's not. Too complicated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, this this is pretty damn cool. Uh, but yeah, it's not forgiving. It's not always an easy engine to drive, but it is very rewarding. It's quite a relaxing engine to drive. You're not always panicking about things. 
Uh, you don't have to worry about AWS definite because this steam engine does not have fitted. Yes, some steam models do have AWS fitted and it's a pain in the ass because every time you go past a signal or AWS ramp and you don't realise that it's a warning, you end up with the emergency brakes coming on. And then you start. Pretty much, it's like being rogered up the arsehole by a dead pigeon. Oh. It's a pleasure, I like the bizarre. You are bizarre. Yes, I am bizarre. But Kieran is a bra. Apparently. <laughs> what size bra? DD. The smallest yeah, possible. <laughs> it's like one of the. Yeah. Triple A is still bigger than your A breast. Leave my boobies alone. My my man tits are bigger, still bigger than Kieran's. <laughs> what? Yeah, the doctors performed the surgery and turned his two boobies into one ultra-mega-giant super boob. A mama boob. Now super tit. 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 I feel sorry for Nick Kershaw after doing that. No, you still wear Eagles Dare version. Super tear, 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 super tear. Oh, Jesus Christ. I think we've got slightly off topic, haven't we? I think we have. Well, I didn't choose to listen. I know freight trains were quite slow anyway, but this thing should be panning along, but oh Jesus, I've made the fire far too heavy because it's now near enough as black as the Ace of Spades coming out of the chimney. The Ace of Spades! The Ace of Spades! No, just shut up. That's better. It's come out a lighter shade of grey. Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey, the new book by... Bruce I've forgotten Bruce the bloke's name. Bruce Astill. No, that's it, that's it. Fifty Shades of Grey, the new autobiography of John Major. <laughs> Anyone who gets that joke, you are a legend. Actually, funny story for the people at home. Um, I was talking to a cross-country turbo star driver uh, a few days ago, and... Um, for some reason, his uh, conductor never turned up, so <laughs> we were talking for a while while this guy turned up. He got off a late running service because there'd been um, a one under somewhere, sadly, and it fucked everything up, as usual. Um, but anyway, on Sunday... On the Saturday I went to Crewe to see the Black Fives on the Cathedral Express, uh, Cromwell was an hour late because someone threw itself under it. Yeah, what, under Cromwell? Well, it was either under Cromwell or either under the train in front of it. I think we would have known if it was under Cromwell. Yeah, there would have been just a cremated body under it. Um, but anyway. But uh, yeah, super tit. Super tit, super tit. No, anyway, um, yeah, I was talking to this guard and um, he's like, oh, uh, he said, oh, I've got no guard. And I went, Oh my god! Where's the guard? Yeah, and I was. And it, this driver just bust out laughing. <laughs> so I was expecting him to. I was expecting him to just be like face palm, but he was just laughing his head off. It was like. Kid, he said I like you. You're funny. <laughs> Even though I'm not a kid, I'm 21 years old. But anyway. Here is. Yeah, I'm 21, man. Going to the club. Get out of the smash. I only thought you were about my age. Wow. How old are you? 17, I'm 18 in March. 
Okay, we, we're we going quite slow here, so what I'm going to do... Oh, we're going up a continual grade, okay. Open the regulator. I was going to restart yeah, it, actually. Power solves everything. Not necessarily unless you're Jeremy Clark. Shut up, Kieran. But, I mean, I won't go to OTT with this review. Um, I'll probably keep it running for about another 5-10 minutes. I don't want it too long. But basically, ba basically, you guys have seen what this thing can do. I mean, it's pulling a good amount of hoppers up a hill. And that's with a crap driver. Um, you know, if you guys out there... Some of you guys are really talented with engine driving. I know you are. Um, then you will get a lot out of this engine you really really will. I've played with it about today and uh, I'm surprised actually this is this is probably one of my times where um, it's not performed because I've not done my best with it yet. Uh, I've driven it before and it works absolutely stunning. Uh, it works beautifully. Really cannot fault it. Perhaps I shouldn't have kept those wagons loaded. Um, yeah. I like the way there's a good amount of water sounds on Woodhead Route because you will need them in the AF. Um, that's the thing about it. Who? Mono tit. I'm joking. Mono tit. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> mono tit. Mono tit. <laughs> Ma no tits, ma no tits. Jesus Christ. Now I think what we need to do is build up some pressure. Although in fact I am. S oh wait, am I accelerating? Holy shit! How am I accelerating? It's not the best of the games in the world, but it's all right. Test the guy with a massive station and a decrepit 37 in his platform. Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh shit, I haven't played it in a long time, I just remembered. Is it free then? Yeah, it's free. Free to play. It's completely free. Completely free. Yep. In fact, I'll tell you what, I'm going to Jeffro pack and show you how fast this thing can really go. I say Jeffro pack, didn't I? That's really bad, that's not my trademark. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Oh, wait, only 6. There you go, right, light engine now. <laughs> Just got a stream of wagons behind me. So I thought I'd take off. I'm going to show you how fast this thing can go, actually. I'll show you what it's pulling power is like. I want you to what hear... No, I, wa I really want people to hear the noise of wh out what it sounds like when it goes faster. Train <laughs> Yeah, It sounds beautiful. Seriously. No, shut up a second. <laughs> This thing is gloriously lovely. How fast are we travelling, Bruce? 43 miles an hour at the minute. 
I'm, I am. Yes, it is pretty much. I am using up pressure like a bitch though, but uh, I'm mainly doing it to prove how nice this thing sounds. And how much of a rubbish driver you are. Oh. <laughs> I love you really, Bruce. I'm just playing with a mi with missile. Uh, I'm playing with a missile. No, uh, not that kind of missile. Um, I'm playing with the whistle, rather. But yes, uh, I'm going to stop before this rather huge gradient, because it is a very huge one. And I wouldn't have made it up that one anyway, even if I tried. Um, but yeah, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to apply the brakes in. Just show you what I mean. Brakes are full on. I've left it at 35%. Um, my good God, look at how it decelerates really quickly. Uh, you really don't need a lot of brake lever power on this for it to stop at all. It, it really does stop. And it really does tank well. So anyway, I hope you have enjoyed the review and super tit, mono tit, uh, triple tit and man tit. Um, <laughs> this AF pack is actually available direct from Steam Sound Supreme uh, it is very nice uh, you do get a, I think there's an offer at the minute I think it's is it, is it 8 quid or whether it is I think it's about 8 quid it's under 10 pounds I believe this AF collection is oh, the collection out, there's also a budget pack as well. there is a budget pack you are correct um, quickly yes uh, Steam Sound Supreme very cleverly asked uh, their customers on Facebook if it was worth doing a budget pack so if you didn't fancy paying eight, nine pounds for the whole shebang of reskins, the improved physics, and everything else, they did a budget pack which uh, involved giving you the better sounds, and I think they tweaked the obit of physics just for the standard RSC model, which was about three ninety nine, I believe. Uh, so it was well worth the money. Um, they still do that now. At the minute, I believe they've got an offer on where. Um, if you purchase the Woodhead Collection Part 1, because this is only Part 1 of the collection, may I add, um, you get a 50% discount code or something along those lines for uh, Woodhead AF Collection Chapter 2 when it comes out. So uh, that's the preserved AF. That's the that's it. The preserved era AFs. Uh, this is Steam era. So this is definitely worth keeping your eyes out for. The next uh, set will have a lot of reskins and liveries of preserved AFs including the much loved um, ATF at the Great Central in Maroon so it's goodbye from me and all is here at GC Railfan I'm just going to uh, quickly get us steaming into the sunset as we say so uh, goodbye from me and it's goodbye from everyone else bye, bye. bye. No, I just got here. bye. bye. Yeah. When oh, <laughs> well I, I went to move the ATF and it didn't move. Oh, hold on, I didn't put the uh, throttle on, did I? Yay! I'm just finishing the video, and off goes my engine. We're just having a good time, my friend. And that, everybody, was the steam engine finally going off. There you go.